Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some things with uh, triangles. So a lot of this might be a review from geometry. So we'll start with this fact here. Uh, all angles, so remember that shorthand notation, angles, all angles in a triangle uh, add to 180 degrees. So remember, a triangle just has three angles, right? So if you add up all three angles, you're going to get 180 degrees. Okay, so all angles in a triangle add to 180 degrees. Um, so let's talk about different types of triangles that we could have. So we have um, an equilateral triangle. So equilateral triangle. Okay. And that's going to be something like uh, this. So an equilateral triangle, all three sides have the same length. So I'll try and make this as accurate as I can. Okay, so all three sides have the same length. Uh, so we denote that like this, this, and this. And because all three sides have the same length, all three angles have the same measure. Well, if you have three angles and they all have the same measure, and they all have to add to 180 degrees, then each angle has to be one-third of 180. So this is 60 degrees, 60 degrees, and 60 degrees in here. Okay? So in an equilateral triangle, uh, no matter what the lengths of the sides are, uh, the angles are all going to have a measure of 60 degrees each. Okay? So that's an equilateral triangle. Um, now, in an isosceles triangle, that's the next type of triangle. Uh, isosceles. So in an isosceles triangle, uh, two of the sides have the same length. Okay, so in this triangle, this side and this side have the same length, which means uh, this angle and this angle actually have the same measure. Okay. But that's really all we can say. So we don't know what the measures are, because we don't know anything about this angle. Um, we don't know anything about the lengths of the sides, but we just know that this side is, is the same length as this side. So the angles across from them are going to have the same measure as each other. Okay. So that's an isosceles triangle. Uh, now there's also uh, the concept of a scalene triangle. So we have a scalene triangle. Um, and that's going to be something like this. So let's draw a picture here. Okay. So that's our scalene triangle here. Um, now we can't really say anything about these angles here. There's sort of something we could say about the sides and angles. Um, so let's come up here and write that down because it's actually a pretty important uh, concept. So uh, in a triangle, In a triangle, the largest angle is across from the longest side. And the smallest angle is is across from uh, oops, no surprise here is across from the uh, shortest side okay so in a triangle the largest angle is across from the longest side and the smallest angle is across from the shortest side okay. So we kind of see that here, right? So we could see that this angle is definitely the largest in the triangle, right? Which means that this is going to be the longest side. So largest angle corresponds or is across from the largest side. And here, this is clearly the shortest side, right? This side is much shorter than uh, these two. So this is going to be the smallest angle here. So we see that uh, shortest side is across from the smallest angle here. Okay? So that's true of any triangle, you know, uh, any triangle there. OK, so that's uh, equilateral triangles, isosceles triangle, and scalene triangle. Now, another very important type of triangle, which uh, we'll talk a lot about uh, later on in trig, is a right triangle. So, uh, let's write that down. Right triangle. So this is a very special kind of triangle. It's a triangle that has a right angle in it. So let's draw a picture of that. <clears throat> Remember, a right angle is 90 degrees. 
Okay, so we denote right angles with this little box here, remember that? So that's, uh, that's what a right triangle looks like, and we also have more definitions here. So these are called the legs, and this right here is called the hypotenuse. So the longest side is called the hypotenuse. Okay. So we can say a few things about these other angles here, right? We don't know what the measures are, but first of all, we know that they're acute, right? Why are they acute? Well, remember, acute means between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Um, and these angles, we can tell from the picture, they're clearly less than 90 degrees, and they have to be, right? Why do they have to be? <clears throat> well, because all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. This one's already 90 degrees, okay? So uh, 180 degrees minus 90 degrees leaves 90 degrees between the two of these. Okay, so both of these angles have to be, uh, they have to add up to 90 degrees. So actually, there's a word for that, too. So what's, remember, if two angles add up to 90 degrees, they're called complementary angles, right? So what we could say then is uh, the acute angles, the acute angles in a right triangle, in a right triangle, are uh, complementary. And remember, complementary just means uh, they add up to 90 degrees. So the acute angles in a right triangle are complementary. So that's going to be important later on. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that again, though. That is important for some stuff we'll do later on with trig. Anyway, uh, so these are acute angles because they're between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, and they're complementary because they have to add up to 90 degrees. And why do they have to add up to 90? Again, because this angle plus this angle plus this angle has to be 180 degrees. So if this one's already 90, then these two together have to make 90. So these two together make 90 degrees. Add 90 more degrees, you get 180 degrees. Okay? So that's why that is. Um, okay, so there's just uh, a couple more quick definitions with right triangles that are very important. And then we'll, uh, that'll be it for this video. So for a right triangle, let's draw one like this. Um, we'll have this angle theta. So remember theta we talked about in an earlier video. Uh, theta is just that Greek letter um, denoting angles. So theta, if theta is this angle here, then uh, theta has a side opposite and adjacent to it. Okay? And also there's the hypotenuse. So this is going to be uh, the opposite side. So this is the opposite side. Uh, this is the adjacent side. And this is the uh, hypotenuse here. So this is the hypotenuse. Okay. So opposite um, is usually abbreviated uh, op, O-P-P, -P, op. Let's uh, make that a little more legible. So that's uh, O, P, P, and adjacent is usually abbreviated A, D, J, and hypotenuse usually abbreviated H, Y, P. Okay. So this is called the opposite side because it's opposite. It's across uh, the triangle from the angle theta. So this is the opposite side. The adjacent side is right next to it. Okay. Yeah, the hypotenuse is right next to it also, but the hypotenuse is always just called the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is always that. Uh, the adjacent side is the side right next to the angle theta, and the opposite side is over there. So which one is opposite, which one's adjacent, depends on where theta is. So we drew the picture like this, but we could also have a right triangle like this. If we have a right triangle like this, uh, if theta were up here instead, so here we put theta over here, but what if theta were over here? Well, then uh, this would be the opposite side, okay? because this is opposite the angle theta. The adjacent side would be this one, and the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse, no matter where theta is. So the hypotenuse is always that. Uh, the adjacent side is the one next to theta. The opposite side is the one across from it. Okay, so those are some uh, basic definitions and concepts with triangles that will be very useful later on when we talk about uh, more complicated things with trig.